kind of show you what I've got here. Uh, I won't go through stripping all the wires and everything else, but I'm going to show you um, basically the stand that I've got here, uh, the buttons, the PLCs, and just some other things, all the tools and stuff that you need to, to put this together. Uh, this is a great little PLC that you can use in, in community college labs, university labs, or even high schools, uh, or even little projects. And it's very economical. And so I just wanted to kind of share how to do this, um, just some steps as we go through some of the things to look for. And then I will link all the products in the description video below. Now it's a beautiful fall day here in Kentucky. And so I'm trying to do this outside. So I apologize if the wind kind of messes with the microphone or you hear some traffic in the background, but I just couldn't resist, um, working outside today. So let's start real quick with the rack. Um, I'm going to have to do something with, uh, in this video because I didn't have the, uh, right width of DIN rail. Uh, you can use any width of DIN rail with this rack. Again, this is linked below. I got this off eBay. It's 3d printed and you can see that it's got, I ordered the one with the power option. Um, unfortunately, the wires aren't colored correctly. And so when we go through this video, you're going to want to use the proper colored wires, but, but I'll, I'll talk about how to determine which wires are which for this. Uh, but again, the, these little, um, racks that they have, the PLC racks and eBay uh, are really good. Um, you can use any width DIN rail, like I said, and you can see how the DIN rail fits into the side and you just screw that DIN rail down to, to fasten it basically. And the good thing is, is it gives us, something to mount our click PLCs on the buttons. And so if you want to expand this out to add more buttons or lights, um, then you just add to the width. Again, like I mentioned, I didn't have DIN rail that was wide enough. And so I plan on using this uh, outside electrical box uh, just to be able to mount some lights for this demonstration. You can use whatever you want to, if you want to find a little hobby box or something like that, but it's not, it's too wide for that DIN rail. I had some old DIN rail mounts that's going to mount to it to make it look kind of nice. I can't do that. So just to kind of cheat what I'm doing for this video is I'm using some, um, some, um, uh, tape, um, extreme mounted tape that's going to hold it very securely, but it would be a lot better if we actually mounted it to the DIN rail. Okay. Uh, so, so that's one thing. Keep that in mind as you're watching this video, you can use, this is the, um, the ethernet, um, click PLC. You can also use the older, uh, click PLCs. It's got the serial, uh, ports on it. They're the same width. Uh, so you can use anything here, but for this demonstration, I'm using the, I'm using the newer ethernet, um, communication for on the clicks. Okay. So these buttons and actually these, let's start with the holders here. I got these off Amazon and they're DIN rail mounted and you can see it's the perfect width for these buttons that I got off uh, automation direct and again all the links will be below and so I've got a stop which is normally closed and a start which is normally open um, I only had so much room they just actually you put them on there and just snap them in place um, very very neat uh, holders it's not a box so your wire will be exposed so keep that in mind if you're doing this in a classroom but for this purposes it's it's really good it's going to hold it uh, great. Something else I could have done, I thought about doing, was mounting this sideways and mounting just some simple push buttons uh, inside of that with the lights. Uh, so something like this uh, would have done the same thing. This kind of gives it more of a clean look and, and more real, real world when you have a normally closed stop and a push button that you'll see close to what you'll see in industry. So those are two things. Again, everything's linked below. I've also got an assortment of wire here, 16 gauge wire. It's, which is actually probably too big for what we're doing here, but just to be safe, it's what I had. And so I'm going to be using that. I've also got some of these, uh, wire connectors, but these things are just, I love these things. So I'm going to use these, uh, to mount on the back side of the DIN rail, but you can just put the wire in there and then clamp it back down and it does mount to the back of the DIN rail. So the back side here, I'm going to be mounting these there. I've also got these lights. These are led lights again on Amazon. 
I've used these a lot in my classes for PLC training demonstrations. I'm going to mount three of them for, for this trainer um, to get the, the stoplight, um, red, yellow, and green lights. But they are um, 24 volt DC lights. I don't know if you can see that. Um, again, they're, they work really good. They're bright. Uh, they don't take a lot of power, so I can actually use the power supply. Everything off of this PLC power supply here, because I got the larger power supply that's 37 amps off Automation Direct, and so I'll be able to power this easily, no problem at all. So I'm gonna mount three lights here, um, and then got my two push buttons, and you can obviously add to this as needed. Okay, so basically, what I'm going to do with the electrical box, I've got just a generic cover that I'm going to mount to that and screw three holes. It might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's going to work for this video. Uh, I've got zip ties, always need zip ties, and just the tools. i got a meter to ohm out the uh, wires, make sure that the voltages are correct. Uh, some wire strippers. These things are fantastic. These are wire strippers that you don't have to change their they, they basically strip any size wire i love these things um so i've got those i've got some wire cutters and then assortment of screws to screw down the terminals and the plc all right so that's basically what we're going to start with uh, i'm going to go ahead and install my connectors i'm going to ohm out this next so that's what you'll see next is i'm going to be ohming this out to determine which color goes with which plug as we look at this so I know exactly what to use. This should have been black, white, and green, but obviously it's coming from eBay. It wasn't um, correct, and so that's okay, as long as we know for this video. But again, in classes, you probably use the right color wire. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to determine uh, which wire goes to the hot, the neutral, and the ground on my plugs. So looking at these plugs here, if you're looking at a plug, this would be your hot, your neutral and your ground, which should be black, white, green. And as you can see, we got blue, yellow, and red. So I have no clue which one goes where. So I'm using an ohm meter uh, continuity test. So you can see there when you get continuity, it beeps. So let's start with the red. Let's go red. And I'm gonna try to do this while using the camera. It's not that one. So it looks like red is probably our hot. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Let's see if blue is neutral or ground. So blue is neutral, and that means yellow should be ground. And one other thing I want to test, so that is ground, I'm just going to make sure we're not grounding out anywhere else before we plug that in. So we're good, right? No continuity between that. Okay, so next I'm going to wire this up if you look closely in the front there here's our ground and here's our leg and our neutral leg being your hot so so the uh, red's going to go on l and blue's going to go on neutral and our yellow will go on the ground so i'm going to go ahead and wire that up and then we'll talk about the rest of it all right so this is probably the weirdest thing um, about this plc is that you have termination at the bottom that you have to bring over the 24 volts. And this is not uncommon, but the way to do it is just a little different. So you can see here, let me get that to focus. Positive 24 volts is at the top. Zero volts is your negative, that's your shorter, that's your blue. And then I tapped into the other side of the ground. I'm gonna zip tie this as well. Um, and then this, this actually comes out you can, if you look really close, you can see you got 24 volts at the top, zero volts the next one down, it skips one, and then you've got your ground at the very bottom. Okay, so um, that's the way this is wired up. And what I'm going to do is, you'll see later, is I, again, I've got the 37 amp power supply so we can power the lights as well and have the power go through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap into the other side of this later on when we get into the inputs and outputs. But that's how you power up your PLC um, to bring power, your 24 volts from your power supply to the bottom of your PLC. Again, next we're gonna be looking at your input and outputs. 
and here's the finished product. It got a little dark last night, so I had to bring it inside, and I just went ahead and did all the wiring, but I will break the wiring down and include the diagram in this video, the description of this video, but uh, the PLC is running. I just have a simple program in so you can see it. So you can look here. This is the uh, normally closed stop button. So as I push that, you can see that going off and on. And then this is the start, which is normally open, which is on input one or two. I'm sorry, this starts with, I'm used to PLC starting with zero. This starts with one, like it should. Here's my light uh, holder there with uh, a, that, I that I actually taped. But actually that tape is ridiculously strong. I was impressed that 3M tape worked great on that. Uh, so I'll probably just leave it there. Honestly, I was going to try to widen out my DIN rail and then uh, actually mount it to the DIN rail, but I'm, I'm okay with that actually. So to kind of show you, this is a simple program that I got going on where I'm sequencing through timers and lights. These click PLCs, this is the only Ethernet one we've got. But this particular model is um, AC input and relay output. So this one goes for about $190 when I made this video. Uh, I don't know, I think I, I think we bought it for like $140, uh, if I'm not mistaken, last year, year before last. But anyway, it's gone up a little bit as everything else has. Um, so this one's about $100, and I think um, $190. Um, and then this is the, again, 37 amp um, power supply. Um, so what I did was I actually tied in to the AC, your leg into C1, and then my neutral, I tied in to the bottom of my switches. And then the output obviously goes to my um, X1 and X2 inputs. So this is the back of the switches. And as you can see here, this would go to your neutral, the blue here. So that goes to that, and you can see I tied in to the bottom, so those are common. And then on the output on these, I just have one going to input one, one going to input two. Now the outputs I ran off, since it's relay, you can do AC or DC, and so I just ran off the other side, like I told you before, of my 24 volts power supply. Yeah. My positive goes to C3 here, and then my negative, or my zero volt, here, the blue wire comes in on the back of my lights. Uh oh, one came off. So pretend like that was still on. I wired into the back of my lights and just piggy tailed. So that's my zero volts going in there, common to the one side. And the back side of these is going to outputs um, one, two, and three. Output one, output two, and output three here. And again, I would use better color wiring system whenever you do this. I just, I was kind of limited. Also, let's talk about safety real quick. I lost my little um, uh, plexiglass cover here. Be sure you have that because obviously you can get into AC here if you're not careful. Um, so I need to clean, the, I need to clean some of these wires up. But um, the big safety thing here is this right here. Um, those holders are fantastic and I'm going to link them below, but you need to be sure and cover that AC. But um, obviously this is normally closed, so this has got um, the neutral all the time. The advantage is these are the neutrals, but still, uh, you just need to be aware of that. That's, that. That'll be a safety issue, so you need to cover that. Uh, you can take some tape or something to cover that up, but um, again, these are great. They really need to have something over the top here. So anyway, that's, that's the PLC trainer. Um, again, it works great. Um, you can do a lot with this. Uh, this trainer, uh, I'll have the complete list below. I haven't done it yet, but I'm guessing total is under $300 uh, for a PLC trainer. And I want to go through a series of software videos where I'm actually programming the PLC and showing you different things compared to Alan Bradley. Hope this helped.